Thank you all for coming to the BPA uh, for SharePoint 2013 webinar featuring our recruiting system. We're going to focus on um, first an overview of the uh, of BPA and the product, and then we're going to get into a pretty in-depth demo, sort of a day in the life of how to treat new recruits like customers and hopefully find that right talent for your organization. So uh, this is an ongoing series we run once a month that features a different aspect of our solutions or a different solution altogether. So please stay uh, up to date on our newsletter and see what we're going to offer next week. Sometimes we get very detailed on a specific uh, piece of functionality within our solutions or we do sort of a, a broad day in the life of. So we have just recently released the 2013 version of our BPA recruiting solution. So thank you all for coming to take a look at it. Um, before we get started, I want to do a quick poll just to see what kind of audience we have here. Um, and the first thing I want to do is um, ask you all what your role is within the organization. And this will help gear um, the conversation a little bit more towards uh, what it is you may want to hear. So if you get a chance, click on that role, the vote. Okay, so it looks like uh, the majority of you are business users. Um, can you see the poll results? Oh, we'll close it and we'll share. Great, so um, the majority of you look like your line of business business users. Um, and then uh, we've got some SharePoint administrators out there, and we've got some business analysts as well who probably gather requirements. So we've got a nice little mix of people there. Uh, one more poll before we get started, because they're just so much fun. Um, it would be interesting to know what your experience is with SharePoint. So we've just opened up another poll. Since we are a SharePoint-based solution, it's always good to know um, if you guys are just getting started haven't used it yet, use it a couple times a week, or absolutely love SharePoint and use it every day. All right, we'll go ahead and close that poll and share it. Well, the majority of you love it and use it every day. Well, that's a good thing because our soul runs on SharePoint and takes advantage of all the great things you love about SharePoint, but just actually makes it a little bit better by turning it into an application delivery engine for recruiting, which is really what SharePoint's all about. It is about automating those frontline business processes um, that are not served by the back-end systems of record, such as your financial systems and ERP systems. So all of those things that uh, help you do your job better, SharePoint is there to do. And BPA rides along that platform and delivers our solutions. So it's going to go ahead and uh, hide that. We'll have another couple polls later on. So uh, I'm joined today by Kevin Townsend. You can see a picture of Kevin in the upper right-hand corner there with the Caesar helmet. Um, he is uh, part of our uh, pre-sales engineering and also post-sales implementation group. And you would be working with Kevin closely and his team. Uh, if you choose to move forward with BPA and helping you get trained on the system as well as doing some configuration. So let's go ahead and do a quick introduction of uh, BPA. BPA is a Swiss-based company. Uh, we have offices in Switzerland as well as here in the U.S. We've got over 800 customers using our product. We support uh, over 12 languages and we've got 50 partners that can help with the more complex implementations and configurations of our solution. We always like to say that BPA is one vendor, SharePoint is one platform, but we provide many, many solutions. And we automate these frontline business critical processes. So today we're talking about the recruiting solution, but we also have a risk-based solution, a quality solution, and a CRM solution. The self-service portal rides across all of those different solutions to provide an external facing uh, aspect of these solutions. But all of them are built on a single platform called the XRM platform, which essentially turns SharePoint into a relational database. Of course, all of that runs on top of SharePoint. And then we provide what we like to say solutions that work the way you work, keeping you in full control. 
So our solutions do grow with you. Um, our solutions by themselves are okay, but our solutions coupled with Microsoft SharePoint as well as all of its features creates the most complete extendable business solution for your organization. Of course, this year we have announced a big addition of our new mobile experience that provides you with an every moment companion. This means that information located in the recruiting platform, such as tasks or candidate information, vacancies, or other things, can be accessible through your iPhone or iPad, Android coming soon, um, in a completely online, offline, separate experience um, that uh, you can take with you in your pocket. Um, we are a private company. We were founded in 2001. All we do is uh, applications for SharePoint, which we've talked about, recruiting, quality, risk, uh, and CRM. Uh, we've been growing very quickly, especially with 2013 and its release. Um, we're Microsoft's Silver Certified Partner and the like. We've got lots of customers out there, like we said, over 800, some very big, like we see 3M here, um, C-Core, a couple of others. Uh, and also very small customers. So the system is very scalable, the pricing is very flexible. But one thing all of these customers have in common is that they love SharePoint and want to do more with SharePoint within their organization. So when we say we layer our solution on top of SharePoint, that means all the SharePoint services that you love can be um, utilized through the application. So if you wanted to add Yammer feeds or any other social groups, you could do that just through standard SharePoint uh, configuration. Uh, we take full advantage of all the document management capabilities, the BI capabilities, search, integration with the cloud, interoperability with your back-end systems to pull data in or push data out, of course the mobility piece, compliance, and different workflow automation tasks. And all of that is taken care of by SharePoint. We just simply surface those features through our application to make our experience more richer. So you can see SharePoint down below, the XRM platform layered right on top, and then the solution that you want, which is recruiting, which we have three flavors of, the standard flavor, professional, and enterprise. And there are just essentially different uh, features that are turned on as you move up the food chain here in terms of complexity for uh, your implementation. And we can help you determine which um, addition is right for your organization. Of course, we deploy in many different uh, ways. We Primarily what we've been doing is a lot of on-premise um, deployments, either with foundation or server. Um, we see a lot of private cloud environments happening now, whether you're hosting your SharePoint environment through somebody like FPWeb or the like, or you want to move to our dedicated hosted environment, we can get you up and running quickly if SharePoint um, isn't quite ready for your organization. And of course, with Office 365, um, we have a lot of ways that we can integrate with your SharePoint on Office 365, and we'd love to talk with you about that as well. Our pricing is very transparent. You can simply go to our website and choose the solution you're looking for and click on the Get Started and Build Your Own Price Quote. We price both by the user or at the server with unlimited user level. Depending on the size of your organization, you may want to start with five or ten users and then grow that out over time to a server solution. We also say that companies do become BPA family companies and that they start with a single solution such as recruiting. They love the web parts, the way it integrates, and they want to expand that to include maybe a CRM, quality or risk, and then ultimately they have all of our solutions running on their servers. There's no retraining since it's all the same XRM platform underneath. Your administrators get very knowledgeable on how the CRM solution works to turn SharePoint into a relational database, and then you end up with lots of great solutions that run your organization. Okay, let's talk about the demo. Before we get in there, uh, we're going to look at candidate tracking. Um, we have introduced in the 2013 version a new concept that separates the idea of positions and vacancies. So a position is something that uh, is a job that you have uh, details about. For example, let's say a sales manager or quality manager or a sales rep. So it's a single position, but you could have many vacancies for that position. So that means you could have an opening for that position in D.C., one in Seattle, one in Amsterdam, one in Japan. And they're all the same position, but they're separate vacancies. So by separating the two, you can standardize the language that you have for a specific position and then just open up multiple vacancies without having to repeat that information over and over again. Of course, a candidate is someone that uh, applies to a vacancy, not to a position, um, and then they go through the onboarding process, which we'll see today. 
We're going to actually see some workflows today that automate the task generation for the candidate review. So we've created something pretty simple. But what it does is as a person moves through your uh, onboarding process in terms of uh, reviewing the candidate for a specific vacancy, um, it'll create tasks for the hiring manager to set up an interview or review the candidate's information um, and then ultimately send out a hiring letter and the like. Um, all of that is very customized for each of our uh, implementations and we are just using standard SharePoint workflows to do that. Um, we have added um, some fields into the uh, the application process that allows you to capture the reason for non-selection for every applicant um, beyond not meeting just the minimum qualifications and that really gets into a lot of the EEO and OFCCP disclaimers and things that you need to track on that. So we are going to take a look at the web integration piece today as well which is really primarily uh, a way for you to post a job vacancy on a website, collect all the information from a candidate including an attachment for resumes and have that automatically populate the candidate field for a specific vacancy within the recruiting system, which kicks off the whole process of generating the tasks for review and the like. So all sorts of good things that we're going to see today. All right, so with that, um, let me see if we've got another poll. Uh, we do have some questions. Oh, okay, I will try to speak louder the whole way through. I think my voice was fading a little bit here and there. Sorry about that. The allergy season is upon us, and I am completely congested. So uh, we can go there. Oh, you know, I'm not sure if I shared. I think I did share that. Uh, let's go ahead, and it would be interesting to know what version of SharePoint each of you all are on so that we can... Um, see what's going on with you. So we see a lot of 2010 internal. We've got uh, a couple Office 365s. I don't see anybody yet on 2013, but I'm sure everybody's talking about moving from 2010 to 2013 and the like. So it's about half and half internal 2010 and Office 365. Um, we can get a couple more votes on this poll, that would be great. Ah, I see 12013 in the questions. Thank you, Alexandra. All right, let's go ahead and close that and we'll share. I would expect to have seen a little more in the 2013, but I did get a couple direct IMs to me that they're on 2013. Um, maybe the poll wasn't working for them. So, uh, very interesting. All right, well, 2013, you're going to find, is a much richer user experience. Um, the performance on 2013 is light years ahead of 2010. Um, that's something you'll notice as a user, but really, 2013 was a facelift in terms of the UI experience for users. And uh, when you get there, you will find it, uh, I guess the best word is refreshing, in terms of navigation and look and feel. Okay, we'll go ahead and take a look at our recruiting system. So what we're looking at here is a 2013 SharePoint site where we've enabled the BPA recruiting uh, application on the site template. So the solution itself just deploys directly through central admin and it's activated on site collection and can begin use right out of the box. What's great about 2013 is we have the ability to really provide a rich template so that when the system is first uh, turned on, it looks pretty much what, like what you see here. Um, we've got the BPA editor, or the data viewers already configured. We've got a bunch of views already configured. All the lists are set up. Of course, there's no data in it, but uh, you're pretty much ready to begin just molding the configuration to fit your needs based on what we've given you out of the box. So where we are, um, what we see here is on the left, we've got the BPA navigator web part, which is uh, a web part that can be trimmed down to have only the uh, items that you want to have for your implementation and you can apply security so that only certain groups can see certain items within this navigation as well. On the right we've got two of our data editor web parts which allow uh, you to have different views that um, on your home screen give the user, which I'm logged in as Discovery 2013, um, what they need to be doing today. So I can see a view that shows my upcoming tasks, 
We can see my current events, which I've got a phone interview coming up. 16 hey, Rob. Yes. I'm seeing the uh, poll still. I don't know if everyone else is still seeing that. I just wanted to check. Hold on. Thank you, Kevin. All right. There we go. Excellent. Let me see what we got here. Okay. Still only see the poll. All right, guys. I got you. You were all yelling at me, and I didn't even see it. Um, okay. So here we see uh, uh, over here on the left is the navigation web part that we were just talking about. On the right, we see uh, the two web parts that show my upcoming tasks, which I've got a couple candidate reviews coming up uh, for different positions. I've got a couple events that have been assigned to me, in this case, a phone interview with uh, Pierre Oliver Baptiste. Um, here are the applications. Now, remember, applications are candidates that have applied to a vacancy that I'm managing, right? So I can see the title, which is actually a concatenation of the candidate and the position. Um, who it's assigned to, the status, um, again, here's the candidate in the position over here, and what vacancy they are applying for. Um, so we can see uh, kind of what's going on here. It's a QA manager, QA manager, QA manager, and the like um, for Washington, Geneva, and Seattle. And also my vacancies that I'm managing, which uh, there are none right now. Um, we also have a nice calendar that can bring together your team's uh, events. So we can see we've got phone interviews, we've got a bunch of other things that are going on. And of course, all of this can be initiated from Microsoft Outlook. We've got full integration with Outlook from Outlook to the recruiting system so that if you create an event in Outlook, you can move it into the, CR, into the recruiting solution. It is not bi-directional, but it does allow you to move emails, tasks, calendars, and the like into the recruiting platform and have that uh, synced up to, to SharePoint. Um, we can see uh, on our task dashboard all of my tasks. We've also integrated in the 2013 the new timeline feature, which allows me to take any of my tasks and move that up to the timeline. And we can see then where this task fits in based on to today, which is a nice SharePoint 2013 feature. In this data viewer web part, we can see we've got the export to Excel enabled. And what this allows you to do is to take any view or any filtered view um, and export it to Excel along with all of the filters so that you can uh, manipulate that information uh, within there. All right. Just, okay, great. Just going through some of the questions, making sure I'm not missing anything again. Um, this data viewer web part does allow you to do complete filtering on your results. So the way we get around uh, managing very large lists of candidates or, or the like is that uh, we can paginate the view of the results uh, that come into the data viewer um, so that we can see 20 or 100 at a time, instead of, even if the results are over 5,000. But then you can also use these data viewers, which people love, to say, you know what, I want to see, um, let's get something a little more meaningful. Uh, little, we can see all of my tasks that are interviews. So I can just type in interview, and it will bring back all of my tasks that contain the word interview. Okay, um, if I got a whole bunch, I could also say I want to see the ones where the, where the candidate is Boris or the like. So the filter views is a really great way to navigate through large uh, lists. These different views, all tasks, late tasks, completed tasks, are completely configurable. All they are are standard SharePoint views against the list of data that are important to you. So if you wanted to see my upcoming tasks that are due today or due this week, you would just simply create another tab view that would allow you to see the information filtered by a specific due date. Um, you can see we're in a little bit of a European date format uh, because I am demoing on the Discovery platform, which is a global platform for trying out our software that you can have access to. Okay, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of recruiting where we've got positions, vacancies, and candidates. Positions, again, are... Um, are our, our job descriptions, not specific openings of a job. So what we can see is we've got two job positions, a QA manager and a director of sales. And when we go into the position details, director of sales, um, we can set all sorts of variables about that position that are important to your organization. Out of the box, we've got descriptions, we've got minimum pay, maximum pay. We can see we've got educational requirements, experience requirements, skills requirements, and all of these things 
um, are easily uh, edited and you can add on to so that the position is as descriptive as you want um, within your organization. Now down below we can see we've got the vacancies related to this position. That is, those are the actual positions that people would apply for. So we've got a, a vacancy in North America um, for the position director of sales. We've also got eight NAHR documents that we want to add to this position. So if there are things such as NDAs or if there's any OSHA documents or other things that need to go as formal documentation related to the position, you can share that here as well any tasks um, related to it, calendar items and attachments and the like. So if we look at a vacancy for North America, we can simply click into that and we'll drill down into the vacancy list and see all the details related to it. So in a sense, the vacancy for the position director of sales is in North America. Um, the hiring division um, we're, we're classifying as management. It's a full-time position. Um, we do need a bachelor degree, we need some director experience, some skills in English, we can see the dates that it's going to be vacant from, um, and all sorts of other information that you want to track. And down below, we can see that there are two people that have applied for this vacancy, uh, Rob Manfredi and Hugh Jackman, uh, who I'll probably lose out to Wolverine. So, the key here is, as you see me moving through recruiting, you don't have to keep going back to the navigation to jump into the next level of data that you want to see. You can keep essentially drilling through the application to get to whatever data it is you want to see. So at first we went to positions, then we went into the vacancy, and now we're looking at the applications. And this is really where we turn um, SharePoint into a relational database, in that we've related these applicants, which are in an applicant list, to these vacancies, and these vacancies to a specific position. Of course, once you start interacting with a candidate, such as phone calls or emails or appointments, then all of that information is going to be related to both the person, the candidate, as well as the vacancy, as well as the position. And that allows us to provide a real 360 degree view of any activity that's going on within your organization. So, um, moving right along with this story, there are several ways for a candidate to apply to a position. One, they can email you, you can simply add a new application, which brings up our forms generator, so I can grab from my candidates list, let's grab uh, Boris, we'll put him in the considering status, We'll sign it using the standard SharePoint people picker to myself. We'll have some notes. We can see it's already, already related this application to the director of sales position and the North American vacancy. And we'll go ahead and save that. So now we've got three applicants. Now, typically a lot of people will use a web form to grab information. So one of the web parts we have within the recruiting platform is uh, the ability to create HTML, CSS, or JavaScript that allows you to produce code to put on a website to grab the information you see here and automatically push it into the CRM that would end up, or into the recruiting system that would end up here. So in this case, we've created um, a demonstration of that on a website. We can see we've got our affirmative action um, EEO information up here. <coughs> Excuse me. We've got um, the information, so we're going to go ahead and grab this. Now you can see it's the same information that you would have within a vacancy for a person. So um, it's pulling information right from the recruiting system on the choice field. So we'll grab Mr. John Doe. And the email. We can grab the EEO information 
So in this case, we're grabbing it right out of the database from the recruiting system. So all of your choices that you want to track come in as well. Your background employment information, again, pulling the choice fields right out of the recruiting system. And then the resume, which they can browse off of their system and then submit it. So what's nice is once this is submitted, both the attachment as well as all of this data will immediately be dumped into the status. And as we created a new applicant, such as Boris here, and we set the status to considering, it actually created a workflow for the hiring manager to review the information to see if we should schedule a workflow. So if I go back to home, we can see that we've got a, um, an upcoming task for these two candidates, uh, Belinda and Pierre, and I need to schedule an interview for uh, Boris. So let's go back to that vacancy. And let's say I take uh, Hugh and I move him from considering to scheduling an interview. In doing so, it actually creates another task. Oop, what are my tasks? Oh, here we go. It actually created a task for Boris, who is the uh, hiring manager to schedule an interview with you. So this now um, creates a date relative task that's to do for Boris to schedule an interview. So as Boris then gets his task, he can then move it through to a completed status. Which saves it in the history list for that candidate and then can create an event for them to uh, schedule an interview. So let's say we go ahead and go to that candidate. And we're going to go ahead and create an event. For this person, call this a meeting. And this is for his position as a director of sales for the vacancy North America and we'll go ahead and save that. Of course we can set time and date. So now myself when I come back in and I look at my current events I can see I've got two uh, events. One is the interview, the other is um, the, the John Baptiste that was there before. So um, there we're tracking our candidates against their vacancies with our positions. Some of the other things that we take advantage of within the recruiting platform is uh, tracking of our HR documents. And these documents are specific documents that, that include things like NDAs, maybe OSHA requirements or other things that you want to apply to a specific vacancy but have a standard way of tracking the official documents, right? These are not necessarily resumes or CVs, but these are documents that are things that um, the HR group wants to push out to certain vacancies or positions um, to comply with your corporate governance. You can also see we've got a list of all of the resumes that have been uploaded as well. And you can see we've got Belinda's resume and Boris's resume. And what's interesting is if you went into Boris's uh, candidate, you would see his resume there as well as Belinda's. But this way you get to see actually a full list of all the resumes in a single repository um, within the documents here. And of course you can see we can sort those um, as well. On the reporting side, uh, we've configured a lot of reports to help you um, see what's going on visually within your recruiting system. And of course all of these 
uh, can be configured to fit your needs uh, based on what it is you want to track. But what we see here is a uh, uh, average number of days to fill a vacancy, the number of vacancies that were created by month, the number of vacancies that were created by hiring division. We can also see the vacancies that were created um, and the type of experience that we were looking for. We can see the vacancies that were created based on uh, the academic degree that was required to fill it. And then we can also see the number of applications that were created by month. And then we can see here we separated them by position. So we've had far more QA manager applications versus the director of sales here, where we've had three. We had uh, Hugh, we had Boris, and we had Rob on those three. We can see also the funnel. Um, so when we set up the statuses of uh, considering, scheduling an interview, and those that have accepted an offer, we can see the numbers that have uh, of, of applicants that are in that process. We can take a look at our candidates that we're getting and the academic degree that they have related to them and also candidates by their experience level that we're getting. And there's uh, no data for that one as well. From a KPI standpoint, I'm sorry, let's go to KPIs. We can see that uh, we can set up a series of KPIs and target levels and then take a look at whether those KPIs are being met. In this case, um, we're looking at uh, days to fill a vacancy and job rotation. In this case, we've got some target levels set on the high end of 10 and a low end of 5. And then as um, metrics are put into the KPI, um, they are uh, trended so that you can, against your goals, understand um, how you're doing against them. So, so we take things like KPIs, um, dashboards, and charts as three different ways to analyze data. KPIs look at a trend against target. Dashboards show status against a specific date. In, in this case, we're looking at the expected uh, day to hire versus today. And then the charts are the visual. We also have a full report builder, which allows you to create reports out of the box. We provide a whole handful of reports that show all of positions, my positions, completed tasks, my tasks, my open tasks, vacancies for the last quarter, and things like that. So if you want to look at those reports, it will run. It will produce that information into our data viewer web part, and then you can export the results right into a spreadsheet for analysis and the like. So that's pretty much uh, everything we wanted to run through today on the demo. We've got one more poll that we want to run. And we have uh, been launching lots of uh, little videos, not only on past webinars, but also on our favorite closer relationships motif. We have just launched one that is astronaut-based with Neil. We're just curious if you have seen those amazing little cartoons that are starting to go viral. <laughs> That's awesome. We see a lot of people loved it. All right, so 60% of you loved it, 40% of you haven't seen it. Okay, well, you definitely need to go to our website and take a look at that. Um, we were at the SharePoint conference in Las Vegas, and it, they were a real big hit for people coming by the booth to watch. So uh, we have recorded this webinar, and we will send out a um, – oops, let me hide this – uh, a recording of this in a, so that you can share it uh, within your organization. But what we would like to do is also schedule either a one-on-one -on -one recruiting presentation or um, we can do a dedicated trial where we'll host the recruiting system, we'll work with you on a configuration session, and then get the system 
close to what you would want for an implementation, load it up with your data, and allow you to evaluate it for 30 days so that you can see if it's right for your organization. It is all SharePoint, so that if you're a SharePoint admin or have access to one, um, the configuration you can then take over and edit the web parts within this uh, trial platform and have full access and know that your data is protected because only you would have access to that site for those 30 days in, as opposed to a shared environment. We can help you finalize your quote and then we can of course provide training and knowledge transfer. So we're here to serve you here in the US. Uh, Kevin and I are located in Washington DC and we have Morris Abel, whoops, oh my other presentation. So Morris Abel is a new director of sales located just outside of San Francisco servicing the West Coast. So whatever time zone you're in, whatever longitude you're in, we are here for you. So thank you all for coming and enjoy your day.